All right, well, welcome here, everyone. And uh, in this video today, uh, myself, Mike Friesen here, and Robin will be joining us in a little bit here this morning. And we're just gonna uh, go through a 3D shoot with you here today. So we're here at the New Totem Archery Club here in Fort St. John, BC. Um, I can say I've probably been a member here for, for quite a while. And today we've got our 3D outdoor shoot, thankfully. And yeah, we're just gonna walk you through a couple of different things you can do uh, in a 3D shoot, what a 3D shoot's all about, uh, scoring a 3D shoot, referencing marks on your animal, where to shoot, uh, just a whole bunch of different things and hopefully you guys can learn, learn a few things. Uh, we'll be talking bow hunting, we'll be talking bow setups, arrow setups, uh, and just the whole bit. So uh, if we miss anything, feel free to comment below uh, and uh, we'll answer them uh, post-production. So yeah, we're just gonna get set up here and hit the course. Before we get started here, just wanna talk about my bow setup here a little bit. So I am running in Elite Synergy with a draw weight of about 61 pounds. And I am shooting a <clears throat> Trophy Ridge React 5 sight. Uh, it's a great sight. I, I really like it. Um, it's got quite a fairly large housing, uh, and I like that, especially for hunting. Uh, it gives me a great sight picture. It allows me to acquire the target a little bit faster than a, a smaller diameter housing. And for the rest, I am using a whisker biscuit. Fairly simple. I get uh, razzed about it every now and then, but I've got nothing against dropaways. I just find that for me, the less mechanical failures that could potentially happen, uh, the better. So whisker biscuit, really simple and uh, very accurate. I get great grouping with it. And in the winter time, as it goes into winter, late October, early November, bow hunting in the morning, if I find that the whisker biscuit is kind of frosted and frozen, I can actually just break the bristles up and uh, and then it's good to go. So no no mechanical possibility of failure there. And then for my arrow setup, I am running a Killen Sticks ventilator, and it's a bit of a a smaller diameter arrow. As you can see, the out the insert uh, to the to the field tip there slightly larger in diameter than the actual shaft, and I really like that specifically for penetration. So once that broadhead passes through into the animal, uh, the wound channel that's created allows a smaller shaft to penetrate deeper with less drag of uh, the arrow touching the sides of the entrance hole and getting a really great penetration if not a full pass through. So I like running a little bit smaller diameter arrows and then just a simple uh, two inch uh, blazer vein there for the, for the back end. Weight wise, these running about 425 grains. I really like this weight in particular, somewhere between 400 and 425. I get decent speed out of the bow and I get uh, good stabilization. I get good momentum out front. That's why I like this uh, insert stainless steel uh, 52 grain insert with a 100 grain head. So I've got 150 grains up front. And uh, it, I don't know if any of you may have looked into the FOC uh, of the arrow, but a slightly forward FOC gives you greater momentum in flight. Now, what that means is better kinetic energy, and it also gives you a good stabilization. So too heavy in the back, the tip's gonna float. Too heavy in the front, the arrow's gonna dive. But having a good FOC, so you can see there how far forward my finger is from the actual center of the arrow. So right, just gonna find it here. It's a little bit windy as well. But right about there is, is my balance point. So center of the arrow is here, FOC is here. So you, you don't want too great of an FOC or too little. There's some great archery calculators out there that can help you uh, find optimal uh, tuning for that arrow uh, with your FOC, but a little heavier out front is a good thing. It it almost pulls the arrow through the air 
the veins do their job in the back stabilizing it and then when you actually impact the target uh, you're getting a great momentum and energy into into that target so that's a little bit about my setup uh, I'm running some local stabilizers uh, they're really great they're carbon fiber golden sombrero is the brand name there and I'm running a, an 8 inch out the back and a 12 inch out the front to just give it a little bit more weight I like a little bit of weight less vibration uh, more stability in the shot so a little bit of weight is not a bad thing for a bow either especially when you're in windy conditions it gives you just a little bit better stabilization there all right so with that we're gonna hit the field here and uh, hit some targets there. just send it Do you? I'm glad. Okay, so Robin showed up here at the range, and uh, Robin I will formally introduce as one of the newest members of the Pursue the Hunt hosting yeah. crew. So get him on some uh, FaceTime here today, Thanks. and we'll hit the range. And like I said, throughout the rounds today, we'll just talk about our setups and um, ranging targets, gapping pins, and things like that. So hopefully you guys can pick up a few things uh, along the way. And this is my first 3D shoot ever, so... Disclaimer. Uh, just forgive me. <laughs> Be patient. <laughs> cool. Okay, let's send it. Sounds good. So you can be within like one meter of the stake. Okay. Just for, just for reference purposes. Ooh, that's gonna drop way low. Nice shot. I think you're right on the 10. Right yeah. on the 10. You're like 10 on line. The, you're like <laughs> okay. So this is a great opportunity to talk about scoring. So the scoring system we're using is the IBO uh, scoring standard. So we're using the typical rings as you can see here on the animal. So right here, we've got Robin's arrow is this top one here. And he is just inside that 10 ring and is also touching the 10 ring. So he's gonna score a 10. And what we have here is my arrow just underneath it, but because it's just below, that's gonna score an eight. And so if my arrow is actually pushing up into the ring, it would be scored as the higher. But because we can see it is fully out from the continuation of the circle, that'll score an eight. So good shooting, Robin. Yeah. Could you see the rings in your binos? Well, in my binos, it's like yeah, so I always, what I do is I check where the rings are. Yeah, right. And then, and then where the rings are, I reference it on the animal without my binos. Yeah. So I, I know the vicinity where it is. Yeah, that was deceiving. Well, that'll play. Oh, there it is. So here's a good example of a line grabber eye. Let's come over here. So go underneath it here a little bit so that you can see it. So you can see it's grabbing the line. So he's gonna get that 11. And I am not pulling the line. So I'm in the 10, so. Boy, that gross, that's a good poke. Oh. Dropping out of things just a hair. That'll play all right. Yeah, now I have to hold in between my, it's a 25 and a 35 yard pin, instead uh, of yeah, a 10 and a 20. So you just gotta remember that mentally, remember right? Remember mentally, so now I like, yeah, this, this grouse would be a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Robin caught the insert. Pulled a five. And Mike got a 10. So this is a good example here. Um, so you can see these rings here. 
So this is a different style of scoring and then there's an upper ring up here. So these rings, if you're shooting ASA, uh, these are an upper lower 12 and a 14. So if you're ever shooting for an upper 12, you actually have to call it. But I believe when you're in the rounds, there is no upper 12, that's only for the shoot downs. And if you grab the lower 12, then you automatically get it. But there is no 11 ring. So you have a 10, a lower 12 for ASA. Now, but eventually, because I'm wondering. <laughs> okay, so Robin posted a really great question, uh, being at his first 3D shoot. So we're looking at the different colored stakes here. So today we got orange, white, green, yellow. So this is based on the category that you shoot in. So orange for us at our club uh, is compound shooters. White is traditional recurve. And then the green is for the junior cadet. And then we've got the yellow for the pre-cub and the peewee. That's just based on experience and age level. Um, and obviously just gives you a better opportunity at the actual, at the actual rings on the target. happens, I guess. Eh? Absolutely. <laughs> There's a the camera girl. That's Isla, my daughter. She's running camera today. With the angle of that cheetah, you're you're thinking that you got to be where you'd normally see the line come up on the back leg, but actually it's like right on top of the front shoulder, so it's definitely, definitely so. If you miss good. right, you're missing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then like with the line, that's with my pins, a new bow, it's 15 yards faster than my old bow. Like it's it's uh, yeah, that's a challenge. It's good. I like it. Did I get the, did I get the? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Did you enter the spot? Sure did. <laughs> there you go. So just a word of warning uh, for people that are pulling arrows. Make sure no one is behind you. <laughs> because the worst spot to get an arrow is right in the inside of the thigh. So someone's pulling and they don't see someone behind them. So just make sure if you're the arrow puller, make sure there's no one directly behind you to avoid injury. Did you get an 11? I did. Your first 11. <laughs> Probably your last 11 too. Hey, for I haven't gone 11 yet. That was my first one. I know, and your last one. Oh. Ooh, challenge accepted. That'll play. Woo. Whoa, dead center. Dead center. I just had a nap late night last night. Like, hey, big guy. I was just napping. No, actually, Isla said I was actually snoring. We ran a little late last night. Just a smidge. Shoulders warmed up now. And a, a shade, a shade right. Like right there. That'll play. But yeah, you didn't go back. You pushed me further in the 10 so you could grab the 10. Yay! Yay. So, watch yourself.
Oh, this is a good opportunity to talk about checking arrows. So, when you have a slapped arrow, you just give her a little flex test because when carbon's already broke, it'll keep cracking. So you give her a good flex test and if you don't hear any cracking, you're good to go. Because you don't want to send an arrow through a bow that's pre-cracked. That's going to cause it. Need a cup holder on that thing. Yeah, right? Yeah. The Baboon Texas Heart Shop. Baboon's gonna be hurt. Oh. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> that was my elbow. Not oh, bad. well, either one. And going back to what we talked about yesterday, Isla. Yeah. <laughs> Just a word of warning uh, for people that are pulling arrows. Make sure no one is behind you. This is like, so the, the shading, if you get a zoom in. Try to pick out. <laughs> That's a good one, eh? So the, uh -huh. the 11 ring is just off to the right of the first dark line on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, you're like, well, oh, this isn't a bad distance, but then you add in all the other factors. So just go up like an inch or two from mine. Yeah. I just kind of sent it, yeah. to be honest. Well, I'm like, I don't know if you get that reference. Or not. Uh. <sighs> okay, so just wrapped up our 3D tournament here at the New Total Archery Club. Robin yeah. just finished his first 3D tournament. Great experience. Definitely uh, picked up a bunch of things to work on uh, coming into fall. So I, I uh, really, really enjoyed it. It was, it was a great experience. The course is set up so good. Uh, it's, it's accessible. There's people walking around with strollers. Yeah, yeah, like, that was good loop. Um, and and challenging too, right? There's lots of downhill, uh, shaded shots, uh, lots of uh, good reference shots for real life situations. I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I know there was definitely some shots, even like today on that raptor. Yeah. It was like just the shadows were just playing mind games and stuff and. Yeah, there's a few shots I'd like back too, but I think overall, um, it, it it is a it does give you a lot more realistic scenarios that you'll encounter out in the out in the field, especially the downhill shots. I find. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, like for for myself, like I've got a range set up at home, and and it's the typical, you know, Reinhardt eight one and eighteen block with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards set up yeah. and. And here you're shooting 22 or 12 or 35. Like yeah. you, you gotta, you you get a little bit more uh, exposure to those random, yeah. more realistic distances that an animal is just gonna come out wherever they come out, and you just gotta be ready to shoot at that. So yeah, no, gap, was, gapping is really important for sure. Yeah. So, 
Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks for having me out. That yeah, you good. bet. Thanks, Robin. Yeah. Good shooting. Yeah. Well, and, some uh, of it was. Yeah. <laughs> today, today was better. Than it was a fun time. It was a fun good. time. Exactly. So. When's, When's the your, next one? Uh, TBD at this point. Yeah. Uh, we may try to have bit one maybe later into the fall before we clean up the course yeah. for winter. Yeah. But with hunting season fast approaching and then there's school back to school and stuff, it, it does get a little hard to yeah. to plan them. But now that we can have them, we probably like to at least get one more in before yep. we button it up for winter. So right on. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys picked up some good tips uh, and, and stuff like that along the way. And hopefully you learned a little bit about 3D archery as well. So we'll catch you on the next one.